your divine spirit, your healing touch, God, your healing power, and your healing birth, O oh God. To travel, O oh God, and to respond to the hospital, O oh God. Amen. Did I say it right? Yes, she did good. <laughs> <laughs> you did awesome. I think, I think Wade was like, that I am in decent yeah, he gave me the hat. <laughs> but uh, we're so glad to have you here. It's good to be here. Yeah. I know it's only a miracle when you sat there at the dinner table tonight and was telling me what all God had done for you. Uh, I, I want you to, to close out this first hour with the song that ministered to you so much during this time. But tell, I want you to tell the view and audience, because, you know, if you're looking at a hopeless situation tonight, she's going to share something I'm telling you that's going to build your faith. Share a little bit of it, honey. Okay. Uh, it's been five years now, and um, I had a 5% chance to live whenever an aneurysm ruptured in my brain. Uh, unexpected, you know, of course. And um, I had had a car wreck that week, and so uh, a nurse had noticed that I was kind of staggering when I walked, and she suggested that they do a CT of the brain, and they did. And that's when they discovered it, but no one knew that it was going to rupture. We thought that I had a lot of time, you know, to... To just plan and maybe have surgery and things like that but uh, a week after that I was on the phone with the doctor that I had worked for I was an RN then and I'm, I worked for a doctor in Union and uh, we were talking about the tests and, and different things that they had done and while we were talking the aneurysm ruptured while you were on the phone with me well, I was on the oh phone my with goodness him. and so at that time I had a stroke on the left and right side and uh, it was massive strokes and um, I remember just falling to the floor and being paralyzed and just screaming. And I was praying at that time. And I, you know, at my church, I have a great church. I have a great family of believers. But at that time, I knew exactly what was going on. And uh, I just cried out to God, you know, to help me. I was like, I was praying, Lord, don't let me die now. I know you're not through with me. I've been singing most of my life. And during that time, I was doing that, of course. Was family there? Uh, my husband and my children were in the room when that happened. Oh, my goodness. And so, of course, while I'm praying and screaming out to God, help me and let me live, Lord, to finish out what I know you have for me to do. And I would like to raise my children, of course. I was praying, Lord, please let me let, raise my children. And uh, so my husband was on the phone. He just got the phone back and got on there with the doctor. And uh, they decided that it would be best not to wait on an ambulance to come, but to just get me right to the hospital and that they would be a helicopter waiting there to airlift me to Greenville Memorial because it is like a 60 mile drive for us. So. Mm -hmm. it took about 15 minutes in the helicopter. Mm -hmm. so. What was going through, what's going through your mind? Uh, actually, uh, <laughs> I remember, uh, you know, driving to the hospital, it seemed... Were you conscious? I was conscious during all this because that's another thing. Couldn't move. Couldn't move, but I was praying for the Lord not to let me go, and I kept, and I know I slipped a few times, but I was praying, you know, please let me, I wanted to be aware of things going on, because I guess being a nurse, and I was like, I, th I knew that, I thought I knew what I was going on as long as I was awake, and so I was praying all the way to the hospital, and my husband said he was driving like a hundred trying to get me there, but it seemed like he was driving 40, you know, and I was, I was just screaming, get me there, get me there, because I knew it was just seconds, you know. And um, so he did, and I was airlifted to Greenville, and I was there for four months that time. Four months? Yeah, and I, it was inoperable, so they couldn't do anything. It was just basically every day, every minute, it was just like, let's just see what happens next. And um, so there was, there was never any hope from doctors or from anyone that I would live. The, what I received more often was that I was dying. And that there's really, there was nothing they could do. They had contacted doctors all over the world. And the type of aneurysm I had was, um, it's different, it's fused form. And they dissect. So it meant that at any time another one could just bloom out and do the same thing. So um, I was basically just there for the four months. Just really not anything happening but me laying there just like that and people praying for me. Are you glad that was happening? Uh, yes, very glad, <laughs> because I'm glad to know that I knew a lot of faith believers, and that I had the faith too, and, and the whole time they were telling me that I was going to die, I really never thought I was going to die, even though, you know, you would be crazy to say you're not scared, because you are scared, mm -hmm. but um, at the same time, I just felt like God was taking me through this trial for a reason, and that something was going to become of it. Did you tell me that every time somebody came in the room? 
Did you always ask, did they know Jesus? Yeah, I, I couldn't talk loud. I could whisper, you know, because my vocal cords were damaged during the strikes. But um, I ever, it was just like I couldn't get to them fast enough, and I think I would scare some of them, you know, because I was like, are you safe? Because anything can happen. It's, it happens so quick, you know. You, you can't leave here. Don't get in the car unless you're saved, you know. And they were getting closer, like, what is she saying? But I was doing it. <laughs> you know what? I, this is certainly not the end of the story, because there's more that happens even after that. But I was wondering tonight, there's a song that came during that time. Would you say the name of it? It's called My God Can Do Anything. My God Can Do Anything. Yeah. I was just wondering, as we close out this first hour tonight, if you could just slip off. Could you slip off and do that song tonight? Mm -hmm. I just, the way you're getting ready for that, I just I just feel like that there are those tonight that are watching, and you stand in need of a miracle. You stand in need of a miracle. So tonight I want you to, to open your heart, and she's going to slip right off. She's going to slip right off and get ready because I believe this song of Amanda tonight is, is going to minister to you. Story a little earlier about how you were in the hospital for four months mm -hmm. with a brain aneurysm. And I asked her, what was she thinking during that time? I said, are you glad people were praying for you? Did you ever think for a moment that you were going to go home to be the Lord? I really don't think I did. Even though they were telling me that and I knew how serious it was. Mm -hmm. It's kind of strange because um, it became like home to me there. And uh, I remember uh, I made friends with all the nurses and everybody. And um, I remember seeing them go out with stretchers that the day before they told me come in. And they were in, in the same situation that I was. And um, they weren't so blessed. And I remember seeing them go out. And I remember one in particular in the the lady had long blonde hair like mine, and um, she didn't make it. But I remember them like taking her out, you know. And later I saw the husband with the two little boys just dragging behind, and I just thought, wow, Whew. you know. I don't think I ever felt sorry for myself, but I felt like, how in the world is my family gonna do this without me, you know? Even though I know that the Lord gives them strength too. Now. We move on ahead a little bit tonight because of our time. But not only did you one time have one aneurysm, but did you turn around and have another one? Yeah, after four months, they decided to let me go home. Um, I could have went to a nursing home, but my family said they would take care of me. And so I went home, and a week later, another aneurysm ruptured again. And that time it was even more severe, if you can get more severe. And um, I was... I immediately went blind. I couldn't see. I couldn't even open my eyelids and uh, because the brain just kind of shut down that part. Wow. And so, but anyway, I, I, they got me to Greenville Memorial again and great doctors there. I have to give them a plug here. <laughs> awesome doctors. And, um, but anyway, they done the craniotomy. So I had a full brain surgery and um, went seven hours, went through it. Great. They said, they told my husband that I'd never walk or talk. And uh, he said when he ever went out, he kind of grabbed my toe, and I wiggled it, you know. And he said he went back out to the waiting room and told everybody. He said, they're saying she's never going to walk or talk, but she moved her foot. I grabbed it, and she moved it, you know. And um, and the Lord healed me. I had a lot of prayer warriors out there, you know. But um, it, had, it wasn't easy, you know, by no means. But the Lord, just it was step by step. As I went out and gave my testimony at different churches, um, one church I went to in Charleston, and it was just like a week after I got back home, they called and a little girl in the church had had a wreck and it damaged her brain severely. So uh, they wanted me to come back down and pray with them and talk to the family again. And we've done that and I've tried to keep up with them since. It's been like three years now. But I've met so many people since this has happened and um, it's just amazing to me is that the direction that the Lord has taken mm -hmm. me in and it's been five years and he's still taking me in a direction that I'm just like going with the flow not asking questions. Now if I understood right they remove something that controls all of your mobility is that right? Right that aneurysm was in the motor skills part of the right frontal lobe and uh, so when it ruptured it was still so uh, diseased that they just went ahead and removed the whole thing so, so I, you really shouldn't even be moving. No, I shouldn't be able to walk or talk or do anything that, that the motor skills, you know, that you do. Walk, talk, do anything. You know? And um, But we know who, 
we know who has that little line going through there that's connecting to that, you know. Then so I go out down to the, you know, to the University of Florida, and I've had one craniotomy. I've had 37 brain surgeries by catheterization. Yes. So it's like I'm a regular, <laughs> and I go in it and I'm all at ease. And so that person that called in about having brain surgery, let me just tell you that uh, I hope you know the Lord and uh, just trust in Him. He'll bring you through it. And really, about singing, you should even be able to sing. And that's that's beautiful beautiful voice. They, I, one of my vocal cords is damaged, so I sing with one vocal cord. Wait a minute, how many? One. One vocal cord? Yes. And my daughters also tell me, they're like, you know, you're going to hit a high note one day and you're going to get another aneurysm rupture. And, but then he looked at me, and this was just this year, and he told me, he said, but you love it, don't you? And I said, yeah, I got to do what the Lord wants me to do. And so he said, then you sing. Because I have to live, you know, and I just trust the Lord on a daily basis. And I just know that when it's my time, it'll be my time. But right now, I think it's God's time, and he's just using me in the ways he can. Praise God. Yeah. Explain about the children now tonight, how they were being see yeah. Right. The Lord gave me a vision of that two years ago. I just had like a quick vision and I saw this, I was on stage and I just saw the stage just full of children, you know, and they all had on black and white. And then I was like, whoa. And so I, my husband's like, did you just have a seizure? What's going on? You're right now, great. And I'm like, I said, no, I had this vision. And so I actually told it in my church. And like I said, it's been two years. And a few months ago, I started praying. I said, Lord, you know, I'm looking like a liar to these people because it hadn't happened yet. And then it was like after I prayed that, it just started happening. I mean, before I know it, I was looking around not really thinking about it. And I just got to thinking, okay, I got all these kids around me with black clothes on and white. And, and literally, they've had this year, just this, this year alone, they've had 50-plus performances that they've been booked to do these skits and all that they do with me. So it's just been totally God, and He's just doing His thing, and people's lives are being changed. I'm telling you, I'm seeing it every day. It just amazes me. And sometimes I don't even say that because I'm sitting back thinking, ooh, you know, the Lord's just doing His thing here, you know. <laughs> we did not introduce your guitar player tonight. Will you talk a little bit about him? Yeah. How became a part of what you're doing? Okay, that would be encourage somebody. How would you encourage somebody tonight? It's really facing an impossibility. After you faced two aneurysms, right, right. they told you you wouldn't be able to, to you went blind. <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't you even could, be alive. You, yeah. It really, should not be. Couldn't even sing. I mean, all the things mm -hmm. you've gone through. Right. How, how would you, what would you say tonight? What would you leave tonight as tonight's life? Was there a scripture God gave you? What, what was it? Okay, I'm going to tell you what God gave me. I did read the Bible a lot, especially whenever, um, I don't know if he's watching that, but I give him credit here. Uh, if anybody knows Rodney Birch with the Roy Knight Singers, he is my cousin. And Rodney told me during those times, he said, Amanda, why don't you read the Bible? Just really get into it because it wasn't much I could do. And I, you know, I was like, well, I read my Bible, but not like I did during that time. But I started reading the Bible and I just studied not one particular thing. But anyway, what God gave me that I would have to tell people out there tonight that if you're facing something, where you are terminally ill and there's it seems like there's no hope is it is definitely one word and it's obedience i had to obey god whether i wanted to or not and when i didn't feel like going i went and i don't turn him down and that's the one word obedience obedience that's it he's changed your life around how does it's made a big difference to all this you've had for the years it's made a big difference because before, you know, I sang my whole life with my family group, and it just seemed like I was kind of in the background, you know, because I was kind of shy and everything about it. And um, just after this, I mean, it, it's just such a miracle. I mean, how can you be quiet? There's no way I can be quiet. And he's given me all this boldness, and I just go out and I just tell everybody, I don't, I don't have to be in a church setting or a concert setting. I mean, I can be at the store or something. I'm going to be telling people about this because they need to hear it. Amen. You know, they really need to hear it. Thank God for your bones. <laughs> well, you're going to just stay right over here with me. And we're going to in harmony and count and lead them. Use them in a way, Lord, that they've never been used before. God, I thank you for testing.